What up, B's and G's? B's and G's! So I've recently been inspired by the huge overtake of Limebird, Lyft, Uber, and all the other brands of scooters out there. I love riding them, they're super fun. Your boy's actually kind of a beast at them. You break it. <laughs> Whoops. So I decided I'm going to build my own. I'm going to take a kick scooter from Razor that's meant for dirt riding and make it electric. Uh, this build is a three part series because I kept having new ideas. Version First two versions are friction drive and the last version is belt drive. So feel free to watch any part of the series you want or follow the whole journey. Uh, I hope you guys build your own and Enjoy. Check it out, boys and girls. My Razor RDS Dirt Scooter 3000 just arrived. Let's open it up. Oh, yeah. So, I just realized that I got played. Check this out. Black label RDS scooter. What is this? What is this? That's a lie. I don't know what happened, man, but you know, sometimes you just got to work with what you got. I'll take it. All right, so I just put it together. Gotta say, this thing's a little bit smaller than I expected, but whatever, man. I saw videos of like 24-year-olds riding it, so I guess I can do it too. Get to kick test rider in the house. It's super lightweight, actually. And I like the wide handlebars, you know? But uh, it is a tiny little thing. It's gonna be fun. All right, so after a little bit of test riding outside, a couple notes. One, Yo, I have big ass feet, but this scooter barely even holds my foot. Like, barely. These handlebars might need to be extended, my dude. Like, I gotta be crouching like I'm taking a poop the whole time I'm on this thing, you know? But one cool thing I learned is that I can ride this thing with no hands. See? <laughs> Attempt number two. <laughs> All right, to the drawing board. <laughs> so here we have this nice dirt razor scooter I bought off of Amazon. It's about 70 bucks, but it is just a kick scooter. Just got a little bit of a beefier frame and handlebars. Um, and the plan is, just like I do with this ripstick, to motorize it. I'm going to use the same motors I had on the ripstick. I mean, the same type. I got some more over here. Once again, these are the Turnigy SK3 Aero Drive 524350 kV motors. I have a couple different options for driving this thing, right? I can do belt driven like this with some pulleys and belts. I could do chain driven. I could do a gear system. Kind of this idea to put like a internal ring gear on the hub and then mount my motors like right here with a pinion gear. I think it'd be pretty cool because then I could just like pop motors everywhere, you know? But uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do, I know it's lame, but I'm going to go with a friction drive mechanism. Looks like this. So this was a, something I used. This is a different project for an electric skateboard I built. But I basically just have two motors with the outrunner rotor spinning right up against the wheel. I know it looks like a terrible idea, but, you know, it kind of worked pretty well. And... I use springs to spring load it against the wheel. So, you know, it can absorb a little bit of impact and if rocks or pebbles get through, it just goes bloop and then sucks back into the wheel. I'm gonna try that first, I think, just because it's the easiest thing to do, like less hardware and, you know, I can get an idea for how fast it'll go. Um, yeah, let me show you what the actual plan for mounting it is. I wanna take these motors and I could originally, I was originally thinking about just doing one, so I was gonna, you know, use friction drive and kind of spring load it up against this wheel, but I don't know, I think it's gonna be kind of weak. 
So I want to double that up, do something like this. I'll probably couple the motors with the 3D printed part and then pop these bad boys like there somehow and have them with like an adapter piece like actually press against the wheel and then I'll spring load them in against the wheel. And then I'll just mount some batteries along, you know, some more of these and my ESCs just all along the frame will look real sleek. You might not even be able to tell it's electric because it'll all be underneath. That's the plan. I gotta start doing some CAD and 3D printing these things. But yeah, I think we're just gonna, I think we're just gonna send it. So I originally 3D, print, 3D printed a coupler to join these two motors, but that got obliterated as you can see here. It was supposed to fit between the back of the motors, but all the little teeth that fit into the motor just ripped off. So this is a no-go. So I came up with a new idea which is to use the prop adapters that came with the motor. And then I chopped off the actual like threaded bolt part. And I used two, so it comes with three mounting bolts. So I used one mounting bolt to mount it onto the motor. And then I made these two little pins, which are gonna, they fall right in here like this. So, now that I have a metal thing keeping them in sync instead of plastic thing, I just use this plastic thing to transfer torque from the out sh the outer shape of this prop adapter, which is like this weird trilobe thingy. And this adapts it from that shape to this like five star shape, which goes like this. Boom. And now we have torque transferred to the drive friction pulley. So now I'm gonna put it together and you guys see what it looks like. All right, so I finally assembled the drivetrain. Here you can see it is spring-loaded against the wheel and the wheel spins freely without anything until you hook it up and then it all runs smoothly. I use the axle for the rear wheel to connect the springs and then just this part of the axle for the other spring. Bent some brackets around the back to actually get the, the whole thing to pivot. Time to send it. Let's send it! From the top, it looks pretty sexy. Can't really see anything, barely. I will flip it around so you can see what we got. Batteries, ESCs, receiver, drivetrain. Boys, I just took this thing down the road from my house. 22 miles per hour on a kid Razor scooter with friction drive. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was legit. So I just took this thing for about three or four runs down the block. You know, I was pretty sensitive with the throttle so that I wouldn't be slipping and it'd kind of slowly accelerate, which worked pretty well because I got a full, you know, four minutes out of it. But eventually, motors got pretty hot, plastic started to melt, and you can see that my motor coupler piece kind of like merged. See those gaps between the metal and the plastic? Those used to be filled by plastic because it, it fit perfectly around that shape. But yeah, once it got hot, it kind of started to melt itself. So you can see that like, this is, you know, semi-intact. And you can see this is like not intact at all. So. I don't know guys, friction drive might not be the way to go, as tragic as that sounds. Thanks for watching guys, if you guys like my video and want to see more, don't forget to pound the subscribe button.